There are times when the typical API backed by a microservice is not enough to ensure smooth integration of different classes of clients. The needs of a mobile application running on a flimsy network and displaying data on a small screen are very different from those of a desktop or their party server enjoying stable and then build bandwidth. A way to mitigate this issue is to place an API gateway in front of our microservices. While the API gateway and its common concerns like authentication, authorization, and rate limiting, it's also able to aggregate multiple API calls to downstream services and also to transform the responses. For example, it can strip out unnecessary data to limit bandwidth consumption. In this scenario, the team responsible for the API gateway is put under the huge pressure of satisfying competing requirements. As you know, it's very difficult to please everyone. Even if we try hard, we will end up bloating the gateway layer, making it difficult to maintain and extend. Sometimes front-end concerns can leak all the way to the underlying microservices. The result is the same. We end up with bloated applications, and most importantly, we introduce the need for coordination between the team developing the front-end and those developing the back-end. Sam Newman introduced the back-end for front-end pattern in the Building Microservices book to tackle this problem. The backend for frontend is just a microservice developed for a specific user interface. This way we can satisfy the requirement of each user interface without blotting our gateway or downstream microservices with presentational concerns. Most importantly, we can fine tune the BFF to serve the specific requirements of its user interface. The best way to think about the BFF pattern is to think of a user interface application split into two portions, one running on the client device and the other running on the server side. For the best results, the same development team should take care of both portions. We want to avoid the need for communication between different teams with different perspectives and priorities. The BFF is not a typical backend application. While your typical microservice is written in Java, Python, or Go, the BFF is usually written in JavaScript or TypeScript to leverage the expertise of the front-end team. Keep this in mind. It's imperative that the BFF service contains only client-specific logic and behavior. We don't want any business logic inside it. General business logic should be placed in the downstream microservices, while global features can still live within the API gateway. Another key notion to keep in mind is that it's perfectly fine for the BFF to be tightly coupled with the UI it supports. It has only one goal, which is to serve its front-end application. Thus, it has to do it in the most efficient way possible. There is no need to try to generalize it since we expect no other client using it or other team developing it. The only exception to this concept is when the BFF is intended for a class of front-end applications rather than a specific user interface. This is a major choice we need to do when we leverage this pattern. Should we create one BFF per user interface? In this setup, Android and iOS have their own BFF. Or should we create one BFF per class of user interfaces? In other words, one BFF could serve all mobile applications. This depends a lot on the context. If you need to leverage different technological stacks, then it might be appropriate to have independent BFF services. If all you need is a lightweight version of the full API, you might get away with just one BFF. 
If you watch my other videos, you know what I'm going to say. Everything is a cost. So before we rush to use the BFF pattern in our next design, let's understand what the drawbacks of this approach are. The main concern around the BFF pattern is code duplication. There is a high chance that the different user interfaces need similar data from the BFF, especially if they belong to the same class. That means different BFF end up as posing similar interfaces. Additionally, the BFFs need to fetch data from the same downstream services. Thus, similar integration code is written multiple times. My advice is to ignore code application in these scenarios. Don't try to identify which code can be reused across the different BFF services, so you can place it in a shared library. If you do that, you will create dependencies between the different front-end teams, negating one of the main benefits that the BFF pattern is supposed to give them. It's obvious that with code application, we are increasing the size of the code base we need to build and maintain. This is generally a very bad idea. We should always aim at keeping the system as lean as possible. However, let's keep in mind the original driver of the BFF pattern. The technological stacks and data needs of the different clients should be so different that it would be detrimental to satisfy their requirements in a single component. As long as we have dedicated teams for each client BFF pair, efficiency will not be an issue. If we don't have enough resources and have just one team dealing with all the front ends, then the BFF pattern will add stress to a team that it's already overloaded. An alternative or sometimes complementary approach to BFF is to power up our APIs with a query language like GraphQL. GraphQL allows the different client applications to specify exactly which data they want to retrieve, removing the need for front-end and back-end teams to agree on interfaces. The back-end team is meant to define the schema and implement the necessary handlers to satisfy the queries, while the front-end teams satisfy their data requirements by crafting queries on their own. In conclusion, if you need to support multiple classes of user interfaces with different requirements and technological stacks, backend for frontend is going to be your BFF. Best friends forever, man. However, make sure you have enough resources, developers with the right skill set before you leverage this pattern. If the type of application you are building is mostly meant to be used by desktop clients or third-party applications, I would stick to a powerful API gateway, possibly supporting a query language like GraphQL. Architecture is always about trade-offs. Make sure you see the whole picture before taking a final decision. Most importantly, help me out by sharing this video with your colleagues. If you want to connect with me, look at the description sections. You find all the details below. Now time to learn something new.